Well, hey, everybody, this is Chris DiFurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Glad to have you along with me today. Today's episode is brought to you by the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer from Voga Coffee. This brewer is truly a revolutionary machine. It just extracts flavors from your coffee that you never thought possible through its SCA award-winning technology, and it is really taking batch brew coffee to the next level, something that's really critical when you consider that uh, right now in the landscape of specialty coffee, quality is so, so important. But not just that, versatility is important too. It's not just a batch brewer. It can brew coffee, yes, but also tea, hot chocolate, cold brew, uh, batch ice lattes, batch cold brew, Uh, This is a workhorse of a machine and is beautifully made, wonderful to look at, and easy to use as well. You'd imagine, as I'm describing it, that it might be really complex to use, but is very, very simple. Wonderful work by the folks over at Voga Coffee, creating the Cyclops Brewer to take us into a new era of coffee and really give us the tools to succeed, especially right now when quality and versatility are so, so key. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want to find out more about the ground control Cyclops Claps Brewer, go visit them over at vogacoffee.com. That's V-O-G-A coffee.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Flare Espresso. Flare Espresso makes all manual lever press espresso machines that have a small footprint and deliver cafe quality espresso to you in your home. Um, you even have people buying these to use in their commercial establishments, uh, maybe for single origin espresso and things like that. But I'll tell you, Uh, This is the first espresso machine that I've had in my home. I mean, I had like a real small Krups machine (laughs) maybe like 20 years ago, but um, I bought this because I really wanted to have espresso at home and I saw so many rave reviews about this product and I'll tell you, they were all right because the first shots I pulled were just so wonderful. It was so easy to use, truly cafe quality for a fraction of the price of what you'd expect to pay for an espresso machine. Now you can get 5% off your entire order over at flareespresso.com when you use the code keys to the flare at checkout. So 5% off your entire order when you use the code keys to the flare. Um, highly recommend this, really fun to use, and I'm so glad that I got mine. Go visit them again over at flareespresso.com. Okay, everybody. So today I wanted to talk about my number one interview mistake. Uh, A long time ago when we started the shift break episodes, we started by talking about uh, one of the first ones was was about my number one, uh, my favorite interview question. And that uh, if any of you remember bonus points here, uh, that question was, in what way have you contributed to the dysfunctions of your past jobs? You know, you personally, kind of a, a question that sets them up to throw themselves under the bus, but also be honest and, you know, we can tell a lot about a person by how they understand their mistakes and have self-awareness. So now back to the interview room, I think this is probably the number one thing I see people doing and that I have seen myself do. And, and that is to simply talk too much and dominate the conversation and essentially give them the answers. We are very passionate about our coffee shops and coffee. We love the story of Seed to Cup. We are are very much into the the, um, story of of how we used to sit on milk crates and take cash from customers and put it in a cigar box. And now look at us with our square system and our three stores. And isn't that amazing? So usually because we don't get to talk to people that much about it unless we're being interviewed, we almost treat our uh, the people that we're interviewing as though they're interviewing us. And we want to tell them the story. And in the process of doing that, what we end up doing is wasting time. Uh, they don't have all day to listen to us drone on about our values and our mission and stuff like that. I'm not saying that you shouldn't say any of those things. But what I think needs to happen is you have to get to know the person that you're interviewing rather than them getting to know you. And that reversal really makes all the difference. And our desire sometimes is to truly just talk too much. And we almost give the answers away in these situations. And so it seems as though when we're done, like because we talk so much and because they kind of assented to the answers that we gave them, that this person sounds like 
the right fit, when actually that person you don't know anything about. You're just reflecting on your own voice and you haven't really gotten anything out of them about who they are. So the way that you can reverse this is simply by acknowledging that you have the propensity to do this and then prepare yourself to walk in there with enough questions to fill the time, but also be okay with silence. That's the hardest part, is letting them have space to kind of squirm and think about the questions. And, you know, it's easy in that moment to to fill in the empty space with your voice because we feel awkward. And so we're just like, um, let me talk about my mission and vision. Um, You know, let me give you some hints as to what I'm looking for. And, and it doesn't really do any good. If if they're not going to be able to answer your questions well or, or talk very in-depth about key questions that represent values that you do have, then maybe they're not the right candidate for the job. But you've got to give them the space and the floor to prove that to you. And of course, one interview is probably not enough but this should be about finding out about them. And what I love happens here also is you might give them opportunity to ask questions of you, right? And that curiosity is a really good sign. But if you're dominating the conversation, then you don't give room for any of that to come to light. So number one mistake, you filling up the time with your own voice, with your ideas, giving them the answers to the questions, and then walking away feeling like it was a good interview, uh, only because you were really just you know, interviewing a mirror. So please avoid that in the future. Make it about getting to know the individual. Be okay with some awkward silences and insightful and incisive questions, and see what happens. You know, we're trying to bring people onto the team that work well with our uh, baristas and our customers. And to do that, we need to give them space and opportunity in the interview process to show us who they are. So uh, I hope that this was a helpful episode for you. Thank you so much for joining me. And I'll see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.